welcome back to Sudoku Swami's Pencil and Paper Method. Today, before we solve a puzzle from start to finish at the end of this video, we're going to talk about what I call two by two by two triples. If you have already watched lesson six in this pencil and paper series, then you should already know what this means. But if not, don't worry because I'm going to fully explain it again here today. When we are solving puzzles with pencil and paper, the idea is to fill in as few candidates as possible in order to keep the puzzle from turning into a complete mess of chicken scratches. We want to be as economical and as efficient as possible so that we can get the most bang for our buck, so to speak. We also want the few candidates that we enter to be as meaningful as possible so that we can get the absolute greatest benefit from them. In a full-on triple, there will be three cells containing the same three candidates. But as you should all know by now, it is not necessary for all three candidates to appear in all three cells in order to qualify as a triple. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here we have a triplet, or a triple, whatever you like to call them, of two, six, and seven. And because these three cells all lie in the same house, row two, and because they contain only those three candidates, those three cells must eventually be solved for those three digits one way or the other. That's the only way it can be. This also means that those three candidates cannot exist or cannot be possibilities for any other cell in that house. This is a full-on triple, meaning that all three candidates are present in all three cells. But as we know, for subsets of three or higher, it is not necessary for all of the subset candidates to be in all the cells. As long as there are at least two of them in each cell, it is still going to function as a normal subset. Like for instance, if this triple looked like this, or like this, those three cells would still constitute a triple and would still have to be solved for those same three digits one way or the other. Now without showing every single possible combination, there are basically four ways a triple can appear. First, with all three candidates in all three cells like this, three by three by three, Second, with only two of the candidates in one cell and all three candidates in the other two cells, like this, or like this, or like this, two by three by three. Third, with only two candidates in two of the cells and all three candidates in the other cell, like this, or like this, or like this two by two by three. And fourth, with just two candidates in each of the three cells, like this or like this, two by two by two. You get the idea. And notice that with the third and the fourth ways, it cannot be like this or like this. These two configurations would simply be a naked pair and a hidden single, okay? Those are not triples. In a triple, the three candidates must be distributed in such a way that they do not form a naked pair in any two of the three cells. And if you have watched lesson six in this series, you know that we will be entering triples only when they appear in this fourth variation that I call a two by two by two triple i.e. three by value cells, okay? And right now, I'm going to splice in a three minute segment from lesson six that will explain this concept a little more in detail. And I'll let you know when I return, okay? Great, here it is. We will enter triplets only when they appear as three by value cells, i.e. two by two by two. The three candidates will be in the configuration of A, B, B, C, and A, C. Here is a triple with candidates 1, 5, and 9 in row 2. Let's call the 1, A, the 5, B, and the 9, C. Now let's eliminate these three candidates. So we have the precise groupings A, B, B, C, and A, C. 
It makes no difference how they are situated or what order they are in, except they must all lie in at least one house. Remember that in subsets of three and higher, it is not necessary for all of the subset candidates to be in all the cells. If you have at least two of the subset candidates in each of the subset cells, it will still function as a subset, here meaning that these three cells must eventually be solved for these three candidates, one way or the other. Notice that there are only two possible solutions to this configuration. From left to right, it can either be A, B, C, or it can be B, C, A. It cannot be any other way because as soon as we solve any one of those three cells, it will dictate what goes in the other two cells, and they will be solved immediately. This is why we only want to fill in triples when they appear like this, as three by-value cells, two by two by two. Now here in this diagram, let's take a look at block three. The one, two, three, five, six, eight are already filled in, leaving exactly three empty cells. So we know this is a triplet. These three cells must eventually be solved for four, seven, or nine, one way or the other. But because there is a four in row one and in column seven, this cell cannot be a four, so it can only be seven or nine. And because there is a seven down here in column eight, this cell can only be four or nine. It cannot be seven. And because there is a nine in this cell in column nine, this cell cannot be a nine, so it can only be four or seven. And because those are all by-value cells, as soon as we solve any one of them, we will immediately know the solutions to the other two. So we will fill in naked triples, but only when they look like this. 2 by 2 by 2. But if there are three candidates in any one of the three cells, then we will just leave it alone. We can make a mental note that it is there, but we won't fill it in unless it is 2 by 2 by 2, okay? So there you have it. That's all there is to it. Okay, I'm back. And remember, a triplet can appear in just one house, i.e. a row or a column or a block, or it can appear in two houses at the same time, i.e. the intersection of a row and a block, or the intersection of a column and a block. And when the triple appears in two houses at the same time, its properties will apply to both of those houses equally. Okay, let's solve today's puzzle. We've got 25 givens, and notice the beautiful symmetry of this puzzle. We've got these diagonal formations, and then we've got these two short horizontal lines. And then all the outside blocks are mirror images of each other, like these two, these two, these two, and these two. But I'm only talking about the symmetry of the positioning of the givens, and not any symmetry in the actual solution. Even so, it's really amazing to me that these puzzles quite often look like this. It's not going to help us solve it, but I do find it fascinating. Now, it might be a good idea for you to try and solve this puzzle on your own before watching me do it, but that's entirely up to you. All right, let's just cycle through the candidates, starting on the ones, and we'll branch off here and there if we see something that catches our eye, okay? All right, because of these two ones in columns one and two, we can put a conjugate pair of ones into those two cells. And I think that's about it for the ones. And there's only one two in the whole puzzle, so there's not much we can do with that. So let's move to the threes. And up here in block two, we have a two line restriction. We've got a three and a nine that block row three, and we've got a three and a nine that block column five. So there's only two cells left for a three and a nine in that block. So we can put a naked pair of three and nine into those two cells. And because this one also blocks row three, we know a one must go into this cell and we can enter that just like that. And now these two threes rule row two and this one rules row three and this one rules column eight. We can put a conjugate pair of threes into those two cells. And because of these two ones, we can put a conjugate pair of ones into those two cells. 
And because of this three and this three, we can put a conjugate pair of threes into these two cells. And now because one of those has to be true, we can erase this three and we can enter this three up here as the solution to that cell. And because of these same two green colored threes, we can put a conjugate pair of threes into these two cells in block eight. And now we have a three line restriction in block seven. We've got a three and a nine in column one. We've got a three and a nine in row seven. And one of these two threes has to be true. So they rule row eight and this nine rules row eight. So we can put a naked pair of three and nine into these two cells, which means this one must be false and you can erase it. And then we can enter the one into this cell because that was a conjugate pair. Does everybody get that? So let's get rid of those colors. And because of this one and this one, we can put a conjugate pair of ones into these two cells. Now notice that's two coinciding conjugate pairs. There's a conjugate pair on the ones and a conjugate pair on the threes. So that is a naked pair. And we also have an X wing on those threes. So now let's get rid of those colors. And up here in block two, there are only three cells left to complete that block. So that has to be a naked triple. And it has to be two, five, and seven. But there's a seven here, and there's a seven here. So these two cells cannot be seven. The seven has got to go there, which means these cells are a naked pair of two and five. All right? And now there are only two cells left unaccounted for in row three, so they must be four and six, and we can enter a naked pair of four and six into those two cells. And now because of this four and this four, we can put a conjugate pair of fours into those two cells, and I think that's it for the fours. And there's only one five in the whole puzzle, so there's not much we can do with that. So let's move to the sixes. Because of this six and this six, we can put a conjugate pair of sixes into these two cells, but let's take a look at row seven. There are only four places left for a six in that row, and this one cannot be a six because of this six, and this one cannot be a six because of that six, and this one cannot be a six because of this six, okay? So the six can only go into that square, and so you can erase this six and enter that six as the solution to that cell. And now because of this six and this six, we can put a conjugate pair of sixes into these two cells, and because of this six, we can put another conjugate pair of sixes into these two cells on a diagonal. And so that makes a crooked X-wing, those four candidate sixes. So I think that's all for the sixes, so let's move to the sevens. And because of these two sevens, we can put a conjugate pair of sevens into these two cells. And because of these two sevens, we can put a conjugate pair of sevens into those two cells. And now, because of these three sevens, we can actually place a seven into that cell, so you can erase that one, and you can solve these two cells, four, one, and seven. So now there are only two cells left in block three, and they must contain two and five, so we can put a naked pair of two and five into those two cells. And because of this one, we just entered up here, and these two ones, which are a conjugate pair, they rule row eight, we can put a conjugate pair of ones into those two cells. And I think that's it for the sevens for now, so let's move on to the eights. And now because of this eight and this eight, we can put a conjugate pair of eights into these two cells. And because of this eight and these two eights, we can crosshatch an eight into that cell. That is the solution to that cell. That cell is an eight, okay? And that leaves only two empty cells left in column five, so they must be a naked pair of two and five, and we can enter those just like that. And then because of these two eights, we can enter a conjugate pair of eights into those two cells. And I think that's all for the eights right now, so let's move to the nines. And up here in this top horizontal shoot, we've got a nine here, and these two nines rule row two, and this nine rules column one, so we can put a conjugate pair of nines into these two cells. And so now we have an X wing on the nines in those four cells. So let's get rid of those colors. And now because of this nine, this nine, and this nine, we can put a conjugate pair of nines into those two cells. But look at row four. Because of this nine right here, these two cells cannot be a nine, okay? And this cell cannot be a nine because of this nine down here. And this cell cannot be a nine because of this nine right here. So there are only two cells left in row four that can contain a nine. And so that is also a conjugate pair on the nines. Even though those two cells are in two different blocks, that is a conjugate pair. One of those nines has to be true. All right, let's keep going. 
So now let's take a look at row seven. We have three cells left to solve and they must be a naked triple of four, five, and eight. But this cell right here, it can see an eight and a four. So it can't be four or eight, it has to be five. So that means these two other cells must be a naked pair of four and eight. And because this one can see the four, this one must be the eight, and this one must be the four. And let's mark those because those are all solved, okay? So now, because we know this is gonna be a five, this cannot be a five because that's a naked pair, and this cannot be a two. So this has to be a five, and this has to be a two, and this is gonna solve this naked pair up here in block two. If this is a five, you can erase that five, and that's a two, and if that's a two, you can erase that two, and that's a five, and we can enter all of those numbers. Okay? So let's get rid of those colors. And so now, because of these two eights all by themselves, we can put a conjugate pair of eights into these two cells, and now we have an X-wing on these eights, okay? And now up here in block one, we have three cells left in row one because these two cells already contain a naked pair of two and five, so they are accounted for. So these three cells have to be four, seven, and nine, and because there's a four and a nine here, this cell has to be the seven, and these two cells must be four and nine. So if this cell is a seven, then this one cannot be a seven. That means this is a seven, which means that cannot be a seven, and this must be a seven because those were all conjugate pairs. So let's enter those. And now we have a naked pair of five and eight remaining in block seven. So we can enter that, which leaves another naked pair of two and six in column one because those are the only two numbers left for column one now that we've put the five and the eight down here. And so now these three cells are also a naked triple, and they have to be two, five, and six, but look what we have. One of these cells has to be a five, so this can't be a five, so that can only be two and six, but we already knew that, that was a naked pair. But this cell cannot be a two, so it can only be five and six, and this cell cannot be a six, so it can only be two and five, and there we have a two by two by two triple. So as soon as we solve any one of those three cells, we're gonna know the value of the other two. But now because of this five and this five, and because of these two fives that rule column one, we can cross hatch a five into that cell. So let's mark that, that is the solution to this cell. So if this is a five, that's gonna solve this two by two by two triple. That can't be a five, so that must be a two. You can erase this two, that has to be a six. And if this is a six, you can erase that six. And this has to be a five. And if this is a six, this cannot be a six, it must be a two, and because this was a conjugate pair, this must be a six, and we can enter all of those numbers. Leaving a naked pair of four and three in block four. Okay, those are the only two numbers left for that block. And now we have a two by two by two triple in column three of three, four, and nine, and we also have a two by two by two triple of three, four, and nine in column two. And because one cell of each of those triples can see a cell of the other triple, as soon as we solve any one of those six cells, it's going to solve the other five of those cells. And now because of this two ruling row five and this two ruling column four, we can cross hatch a two into this cell. That has to be the solution to that cell, which means this cannot be a nine. So let's mark that cell, that's gonna be a two, which means this has to be a nine. So it can't be a three, so this has to be a three, and this cannot be a nine, okay? But now that we know this is a three, this cannot be a three, and now we're gonna solve both of those two by two by two triples. If this is a four, that's not a four, and if this is a four, that's not a four. So if this is a nine, that's not a nine, this is a four, that has to be a three. If this is a nine, this is not a nine, this must be a three, and if that's a three, you can erase this three, and because this is a four, this cannot be a four, and this must be a four, and now we can enter all of those numbers. Okay. And now we have two cells left in block five, and they must be one and nine, but because there's a nine over here, this has to be the one, and this has to be the nine. Now, if this is a one, you can erase that one, and that becomes a three. 
And if this is a 3, you can erase that 3, and this becomes a 1. And if this is a 3, that's not a 3, and this must be a 9. And if that's a 9, you can erase that 9 and enter that 3. So let's enter those. And now we've got a full house in row 4, so that has to be a 4. And we've got a full house in row 6, so that has to be a 2. And if this is a 2, this cannot be a 2. That has to be a 5. And if that's a 5, you can erase that 5, enter that 2. And so now we can enter all of those numbers. And this leaves a 1 and a 6 naked pair for these two cells. Okay. And down here, this must be a naked pair of 8 and 6. But because there's a 6 right here, this has to be the 8. And this has to be the 6. So you can erase that 8. And if this is an 8, this is not an 8. That's a 5. And if that's a 5, this is not a 5. And that is an 8. So let's enter those. And now we have a naked pair remaining in row 8. They have to be 4 and 2. And because there's a 2 up here, this has to be the 4. And this has to be the 2. So if this is a 4, that's not a 4. You can erase that 4. That's a 6. If that's a 6, you can erase that 6. That becomes a 4. And if this is a 6, this is not a 6. And if that's a 1, this is not a 1. And that's a 6. And if this is a 1, this is not a 1. And that is a 1. And so we can enter all of those numbers leaving one cell left in the whole puzzle, and that must be a 5. So we put that in there, and the puzzle is finished. Got it? Okay, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please click the red subscribe button, the thumbs up icon, and be sure to click the little bell icon if you would like to be notified of new video uploads. And don't forget, if anyone has a puzzle from a newspaper, a magazine, a puzzle book, or whatever, that you would like to see me solve in a future video, please send it to me at sudokuswami at gmail.com, okay? In the next lesson, before we solve our puzzle, there will be a short tutorial on the concept of uniqueness in Sudoku puzzles. And we will focus in particular on a very cool pattern called Unique Rectangles Type 1, which can be readily used to make candidate eliminations and other deductions when solving puzzles with only pencil and paper. So I hope you will join me for that. In the meantime, be well and be happy.